Hi everybody, it's Alicia with Dean Cuisine talking to you today about alternatives to all-purpose flour. So uh, if we are observing some sort of gluten-free diet uh, or if we have celiac disease, um, many of us are looking for alternatives to all-purpose flour and there are so many of them on the market. How do you know which one to use? How do you know uh, what the substitution ratio is? And the best advice that I can give you as a home cook is to just start experimenting, start buying some of these products and see actually flavor-wise and texture-wise what you really like. Um, there are some examples that are actually very comparable texturally to all-purpose flour, one of those being arrowroot powder, another one is tap tapioca starch, tapioca flour, uh, there's also cassava flour. So these are all examples that are made with uh, plants that are um, similar, again, texturally, um, but they do make sort of good coating. They're good for thickening agents. They're good if you're making sauces. They're good if you're actually breading or frying. Um, other examples that I tend to use are um, actually made from nuts. And I'll give you an example of that, hazelnut being one of those, uh, almond flour being uh, my probably go-to choice. The reason why I prefer these is because they do have sort of a nuttier uh, flavor that's a little bit more substantial and they actually make a good crunch. Um, one thing that you do have to worry about is how finely they are ground. Um, one thing that I tend to avoid, although I do have it in my pantry, is coconut flour. Coconut flour actually does taste like coconut so um, I tend to reserve it for things like breading for shrimp when I don't mind that coconut flavor um, but I recently made an AIP recipe where uh, I had some chicken um, meatballs and nuggets that I was making and the recipe called for coconut flour I didn't really like the way it turned out it tasted too coconutty for me so again uh, different ways that you can experiment and see what your personal tastes are like I would also highly recommend that you look into some of the corn um, substitutes that are on the market uh, cornstarch being one of those, you see this a lot in Asian cooking, for example, to thicken up sauces. And the final one that I would recommend to you is xanthan gum. A lot of people haven't heard of this, but it is actually used as an emulsifier um, commercially in many uh, sauces and products that you see. It's really good for thickening up dressings and it gives a nice texture. Um, so some of these flowers, a lot of the complaints are is that they clump. Um, and they don't necessarily have the consistency that people like to see when they're cooking and, and having velvety sauces. Well, that's what you get when you have a refined product. Refined products have anti-clumping agents and different sorts of things to prevent those, those uh, clumping um, things from happening. Um, but if you're not into the chemicals that coincide with that and you prefer things that are a little bit more natural, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of give and take there. So one thing that I would recommend to you again is really kind of check out the internet, um, start buying some of these things and see what you like and how you can uh, have different types of alternatives to all-purpose flour in your own home. Again, this is Alicia with Dean Cuisine. Thanks for listening. Take care, everybody.